good afternoon all of you so, uh, first we'll quickly one second we have more students joining in Okay, so first of all, we'll be taking a quick introduction about what CP2 paper is all about. And then uh, we'll be proceeding, we'll be starting one of the models today. Uh, what we'll do is moving forward, we will be, uh, for CP2, we'll complete one entire model that is one paper one and paper two. And then we'll be moving to uh, paper solving, like past paper solving, since we don't have any other proper resource for CP2. So we'll be majorly discussing the past papers itself. I'll just uh, share the screen. I've prepared one PPT, which we can discuss. Just one second, I'll share the screen. Is the screen No, one second. I hope my screen is visible. Just comment a yes quickly. Okay. Okay. So, um, first of all what cp2 paper is all about so the paper name is modeling practice so when we say modeling practice what do we understand that it contains lots of modelings but uh, but as we proceed ahead with the paper we'll realize that it's not only about modeling we have modeling plus a lot of documentation part that we cover in this paper right so this is a quick guide the entire uh, for the entire cp2 um, maybe we'll just discuss about it for another 40 minutes and then we can start with a model, right? So first thing, what do we learn from the subject after going through the entire um, CP2? What things we learn is to first create a model from scratch. Now uh, we'll get a scenario. Uh, we have to understand, read the scenario, understand the data that they have given, understand the background, and then create a model from scratch. Presenting clearly in, it in a spreadsheet, and then whatever is taught and whatever is done by you on the spreadsheet, you need to present or document it in a particular manner. Um, now, when you build a model, obviously any model will have its own assumptions, uh, its own data sets that we will need to vali uh, validate and correct. So it's very interesting. And yes, it includes modeling part. But again, uh, as uh, the name suggests, CP2 modeling practice, it's not only about modeling, we have to document and major con portion of it as we'll see is the documentation portion right uh, so it's a lot of communication involved at the same time um, and again at the same time a lot of modeling is also involved now uh, what are the aims uh, of this paper so it helps you to prepare understand the data understand the situation and to prepare a model and also to visualize it so you will be able to build a actual model using any realistic so you will get a scenario it, the scenario can be from anything it does not necessarily uh, has to be from insurance core insurance it does not necessarily has to be uh, related to always related to life insurance general insurance or pension you can get a lot of things over here which can be um, 
like not exactly actuarial as we say but yes we can get any model any scenario uh, which we need to model in spreadsheet for example they will give you like one of the past papers was where they gave us like uh, from um, five different schools right we are getting marks from five different schools and then they asked us to compare so um, the marks of five different schools is it similar are the students are perform students performing similarly in the uh, all five schools and like they had divided into on the basis of location so in one location we had three schools in one location we had two schools so they said that uh, undertake a test wherein you can uh, say that where is there any difference in the location or not uh, and how location impacts marks so th these are few things which we say that does is not core actual the work but again uh, the logics and the things we apply is definitely actual and we build the model and it's very interesting right and then once you have built the model the next thing that we uh, the next thing that we do is to document the model in an audit trail. Very, very important part and very interesting in paper one. And then uh, we need to so basically analyze the results, whatever output, whatever results you have got. Analyze, comment on that, uh, comment on that. Um, if you uh, like maybe give a few conclusions and uh, apply the results. So this is the entire thing that we do. Um, in it's not only modeling a lot of part is documentation now how what is the exam format so for ifoi those who are appearing from ifoi the exam generally happens on two consecutive days monday tuesday and tuesday wednesday like that and uh both of the exams paper one and paper two is of three hours 20 minutes each which is inclusive of downloading and reading time and everything uh all on top of that you get a 30 minutes time for uploading that's just for uploading you don't have to do anything so writing time is entirely writing reading everything is just three hours 20 minutes for ia the exam generally takes place on the same day so in the morning slot we have paper one then they give you a one hour around one hour break and then you have the paper two which is again of three hours 15 minutes now uh, for both of the papers paper one and paper two both of these models uh, both of these papers will contain the modeling portion and the models that we get the scenarios that we get will be different on these two days so it will not be the same so if paper one is one of the models paper two will be a different model like a, a, a very different model it will not be same it will not be a continuation so paper one is not a paper two is not a continuation of paper one these two are completely different exams now let's understand the format for paper one so in case of paper one uh, again here we have the spreadsheet part and ms word so two things we'll be using in our exams one is excel and one is ms word now uh, here how is it different now you will get a scenario material uh, or you can say additional guidance which will contain a background now that entire background it can be like as i mentioned i was talking about the schools so it can be any background like they will give you data set of uh, let's suppose in one of the terms they gave us electricity data set uh, electricity produced by solar panels and then they had built an entire uh, situation around that particular thing so they will give you some of the questions you have to build the model using the scenario from scratch so in paper one we'll be building the model from scratch and then uh, once your entire model is built we'll produce like we'll document that entire paper in the audit trail so what's an audit trail we'll come to that in details but audit trail is basically a documentation which is generally prepared for a fellow actually and uh us like a senior actually and your colleague so when i say fellow student or colleague uh, it's basically someone who has the same level of knowledge as you have and a uh, senior actually is obviously ha uh, have has more technical details than you so what they need is just to get an overview of what you have done how you have done um, what assumptions you have made in the model whereas the fellow student needs to understand that how what were the steps you took to make, make the model what functions have you what excel functions you have used so these things so we need to prepare one concise report in 
MS Word that we call it as audit trail, which contains how, um, what you have done in the spreadsheet, how you have done it, what are the assumptions that you have made, and so on. So that's the entire day one, how your paper one goes. Now, what is paper two? So paper two, you again get a scenario, you again get a background, but along with that, you get a small audit trail as well. In the question paper itself, you get a background and you get a small audit trail. Now, what happens in paper two is that they'll give you a model, like the spreadsheet that they'll give you will contain a data and some part of the model, like a half to 60% part of the model will already been made by a fellow student. So when I say fellow student, it has already been prepared by a colleague, right? Now, what you have to do is you have to complete the model. So uh, maybe let's suppose just 20 to 30% of the model is left undone, which you have to complete. And then after that, maybe some charts you want to prepare on MS Excel itself. So that's how you build, like complete the model. So you are not building the model from scratch on paper on day two in paper two you are not building the model from scratch what you are actually doing is the model is already made the scenario is given even the audit trail like a part of audit trail is given you just need to read the background understand what the model uh, how the spreadsheet how the model has been made read the audit trail and then just complete the model like in the same lines you have to complete the model make the chart that's it after that, you need to communicate the entire thing in something called as a summary document. So what do you mean by a summary document? Now, a summary document is basically, again, it's similar to audit trail, not exactly. It's like much lengthier than audit trail. So we have like a lot of parts. Um, we also state how uh, and what has been done in the uh, word in the sum in the in the spreadsheet in the modeling part but along with that we also mention that uh, the final results that we have got we give a few comments um explain the results give reasonableness checks on the result whether the results are accurate or not uh this if there are different scenarios in the model you compare different scenarios you compare different results and then finally you give the next steps so that we'll see how it's built but yes the documentation part on paper do is lengthier as compared to paper one so now you understand that it's not only modeling along with modeling its documentation whenever you have something uh related to documentation obviously the communication plays a very very important role so it's very important that we understand how to write how to communicate how to use the correct words and how to present our answers because all of these things will these things were not assessed in any of the past actual papers, but now in CP2 and also CP3 goes in a similar manner where our communication skills, presentation skills, um, how you are writing, the te technique, the assumptions, all of these things will be assessed. Then uh, we have the, so basically there is no eligibility criteria as such for CP2. Now many students ask that, what do we need, uh, you know, if you want to sit for a CP2 exam? Generally, there is, as such, uh, they don't say that you need any prior knowledge. But yeah, if you have done the core papers like CM and CS papers, CM1 and CS1 and CM2, CS2, if you have done these papers, then it's like very good. Yes, one more thing is that uh, even after you have done CM1 and CS1, which is CT1, CT5, and CT3, if, even if you have done these uh, two and these three papers, then it's fine because you have relevant knowledge, basic knowledge on probability distributions and then basic CM1 knowledge. That's what you need. And for the paper, and you're good to go. But yes, if you have done CM2, CS2, maybe a little bit advantage is there. Not a very big deal. Right. Uh, if you, we if we consider basics, since we are using Excel and MS Word, we just need like very, very, very basic functions of Excel, like very basic. They don't even use pivot tables. They don't even it's not allowed. You are not supposed to use pivot tables. You're not supposed to use anything which is which needs a manual intervention. So these things are not used. And the functions that we are using is extremely simple functions like some count, average, 
you know if function very basic functions like very very basic functions are used no difficult functions are used so whatever knowledge you have from your cm1 cm2 is more than enough you don't need anything else again ms word is very basic you just need to you know type in and maybe copy paste a few graphs so it's very simple you don't need a you don't need to have like that good knowledge of word so it's fine just basics are fine for uh, cp2 appearing for cp2 paper now uh, so when we are building a model now this is the this is actually a very important part when you start building a model okay um now what do you need to uh, keep in mind when we are building a model so generally it's a generally students feel that you'll get a very difficult model you'll not be able to make it since you are making it from scratch for the first time it can be extremely difficult but this is not the case okay so you need to be very simple with that it's not very difficult um so for example um like just simple approach you need to use you need to spread out your work you need to ensure that your model can be easily changed so when i say easily changed for example if some of the parameters are changing so make sure you are not hard coding anything this is actually a very 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 important thing we use separate parameters for example if interest rate changes we just change one cell and all the values changes so that is how uh, that is the level of interaction that you need to maintain in your spreadsheet um you need to separate out the data the inputs the calculation the results all of these are spread out and uh, properly placed uh, the spreadsheet should be from left to right bottom to up please don't do it vice versa and then keep the formulas very simple don't complicate and if you like if you have this in your mind that if i'll be using difficult formulas i'll be using like fancy formulas i'll get more marks no way you are actually going to lose marks over there so if you feel that this particular thing can be broken down into two columns do that you will actually get marks for it okay make sure you flag the uh, columns so for example if you are making a if you are making a model and then in, in that model like the first row the first row is different and the other rows are different so make sure you flag it like for example just make a change the color of the first row to maybe some other color so that uh, the person who's reviewing the person who's going through the model understands that okay in this entire column this one particular value is different as to others so that's what is flagging all of these things you till now these things are not very important to us when we appeared for cmcs papers but now this is extremely important because all of these points will have one mark or some marks definitely attached to it right so avoid any kind of manual intervention so if you feel like i can do sorting filtering and do some kind of manual interventions which you cannot actually write properly in your audit trail which is not visible which uh needs any kind of intervention by a third person or by the person who created the model that's not a good thing right so it's very important that you keep it very interactive so that's the basic things that we need to keep in mind and also we need to keep on uh like facilitate it with checks so make sure whatever formulas you are using you can immediately have certain checks into it so that we can actually you know verify the result is correct or not or even the third person who is maybe changing any parameters can quickly verify that whether the results are correct you can just put in uh, checks here and there we call this as automated checks or self checks or automatic checks which is extremely important again you have marks attached to it so make sure you have these checks ready in your spreadsheet right uh i'll take up the questions towards the end so i'll just quickly go through the slides now uh so people say that cp2 is very easy to clear no doubt it will be if you have done few things so if you have like practiced if you minimum you have to practice 10 term papers that is what i say see why do i say minimum 10 terms there are students who like do 6 7 papers they clear or extraordinary students who may do less number of papers still they clear 
but again why do i say minimum and there are students doing 15 papers as well so if, why do i say 10 papers is because you will not always be in a mood to sit down and type the audit trail when when practicing you will not always be in the mood of sit down and type the entire summary document which is of eight to nine pages so you need to type that at one stretch so you may not be able to do that always but that is something that we need to have we have to do in order to clear our exam because the main 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 thing that hits in cp2 exam is the time specifically in paper one the time constraint is like a lot because we need to understand the scenario we need to build the model and we need to prepare the audit trail so entire thing needs to be done in those three hours 20 minutes build the models again audit trail is somewhere around six to seven pages so it takes time definitely and you will face a time crunch in paper one so it's very important that you prioritize things which are important you are not stuck in one place you understand as to you know what things are important and you move accordingly so that's very very important so we need we have to have that understanding of how to build a basic model so that no matter what uh, scenario you get you are at least able to produce something may so happen that the scenario can be extremely difficult it has happened in past we've got like really difficult scenarios but again if you are able to do something if you are able to do things from give accurate assumption apply basic techniques and at least able to build a basic model you get that marks and you produce it in audit trail and you can clear your exam so you need to understand what you have to you what you want to prioritize that's very important in cp2 because you will not be able to breathe in your paper one you will not be able to have that time left at the end maybe to go back and check that's never gonna happen in cp1 cp2 paper one specifically paper two generally students still have time towards the end uh, i will not say it's shorter um comparatively it's shorter because we don't want to make the model from the scratch model is there so we don't have to apply the brain so much we just need to complete it and we need to produce a summary but again getting marks in paper one is easier than paper two although paper one is lengthy but paper one is like more scoring because you are able to get more marks in audit trail than compared to summary document so now what do you need to keep in mind like how to approach uh, this particular exam so paper one paper one make sure it's very simple you show as i said show all the calculation do not get into details like there are students who get stuck now if there is a five mark question um they have to do something and they are just stuck and they are stuck they're not able to proceed so don't get stuck make any assumption for example if they are saying that the cash flows are happening anytime during the year if you're not able to build a model in such a situation just maybe take an assumption that you are assuming that the cash flows are happening in the middle of the year and proceed you will actually you know not lose the five marks they will give you some marks over there you will get your marks in other of the parts you will be able to finish your paper you will get marks in the word the audit trail part you will just move on just move on document it and just move on do not sit on it very 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 important this term also i had students calling me and telling me that paper one i got stuck i was not able to finish my audit trail there were some students very smart they said that i just skipped that part took an assumption wrote anything like did anything and moved on and completed my audit trail that's a smart move that we need to make an exam specifically cp2 paper one otherwise honestly telling you you will not be able to finish it if you get stuck in any of the parts because not all the parts will be easy and again you need to keep in mind that you have to put in a lot of checks um self checks as i said what self checks are there is something called as reasonableness check that we need to document so what do you mean by uh, reasonableness checks reasonableness check is basically whether your output is reasonable or not obviously if you are getting a negative premium amount that's a wrong result so you need to put in some reasonableness checks 
you need to document the reasonableness checks whether the answer that you are getting looks reasonable or not then again in the audit trail portion all the steps should be put in you need to like first we start with a uh, so i'll come to the um, content portion later so we start like all the steps need whatever steps you have carried out in the modeling portion should be included whatever assumptions uh, you have made should be stated clearly um, and what are the different results that you are getting um, you need to include in checks and the reasonableness checks in between so that's your audit trail portion not very easy it not very difficult it's easier to write so it's easier to follow also next is a summary summary document which is paper 2 so paper 2 summary is prepared generally for two people again one is the senior actuary and another one is your client so for example if you, any uh, any client anyone um, has approached you to build the model uh, so you need to communicate that to the client and to the senior actuary specifically so here the level of communication will be a little bit more concise and at the same time uh, exhaustive as compared to audit trail so here summary is like really big it's like eight to nine pages you give the assumptions uh, that you have made you give what data you have used what sources you have taken the data from uh, and then you explain the steps like you did in paper, like, like you did in audit trail, but not in details. So here we'll not be mentioning what functions we have used in Excel, in which column, in which tab, in which cell, what we have done. No, that kind of details is done in audit trail. But here you need to list down and tell what steps you have done after that what results you have got. So everything will be pasted like your graphs will be pasted your tables will be pasted everything will be pasted and you need to like put in all the results elaborate on the results like why you have got this curve why is this increasing why is this result negative explain very very nicely and then you give a conclusion so conclusion will state basically um what scenario one contains, what scenario two contains, maybe if there are multiple scenarios, how the results will change moving ahead. That's your conclusion. And finally, very, very important part is the next steps. So next steps is again, uh, I will come to it. So next steps is what moving forward, how can you improve and work upon your model? So how actually CP2 is marked, you can take a screenshot of this. This is very, very important. Now the things, so this is this I have taken from the recent few term papers like um, this term April papers and last term's paper. So in paper one, in paper one, which is the first day. So in paper one, we have uh, again the um, so modeling part. When I say modeling part in paper one, they give you some data. So when they give you some data, you need to do data checks. You need to validate the data that you are using, whether it's appropriate or fit for use. If there are some missing data, if there are some changes that needs to be done, you correct the data. So validate the data, correct the data, make the corrections, make the amendments, and then move ahead with the modeling part. This entire thing will be of approximately 27 to 30 marks like in a range of 27 to 30 not at all more than that so it's like very short uh the marks is like very like not very like it's 30 percent of the paper right so it's not very great uh we say modeling but again you can actually make out that the modeling part is not the main part over here and then uh in paper two we have the uh technique so whatever i was mentioning in my third slide i guess when i was talking about uh, you need to keep it simple spread out your work left to right top to bottom approach and then after that don't uh, and put in any kind of manual intervention uh, everything should have parameters first the inputs then the model then the answer so that entire thing will fall under this part wherein your modeling practice modeling technique your approach uh, self checks whether are you providing automate automatic checks all of this will have again eight to ten marks somewhere around nine marks so you can actually understand that this part is also 
important although it's not at all related to what you will uh, you know not at all actually related to uh, your uh, mod model model because the scenario will always be different but this thing the technique and the practice is something which you will develop once you get into the habit of building a model on your own once you practice cp2 paper a lot right and then lastly we have the audit trail and you can see the audit trail is 62 so approximately 62 to 60 sometimes 65 also it goes in some of the papers so 60 percent weightage on average is audit trail which is the documentation part so the 40 percent weightage is on the modeling part the data part and the technique you are using the you know the representation part everything so that is your 40 percent approximately and 60 percent is documentation so if the documentation is 60 percent then ideally if you like want to clear the exam you should spend that 60 percent of time on your documentation part now what students do they end up into a trouble where they spend a lot of part in modeling and they are just left with a very very little time for audit trail they're not able to finish the audit trail they don't get the full marks they or maybe you know they're not able to get the marks and actually audit trail is very very scoring so this is something we have to work upon in classes and we need to do it consciously paper two again uh, so modeling, as I said, that the modeling was model part was already given to us. We just need to complete it and we need to produce some charts. So approximately 18 or 18 to 20, you can say, is allotted to the modeling. Reading first, you read the scenario, understand it. Model is already made. Understand the model which is made, complete it, build the charts. Everything is 20 marks. Rest 80 percent is the summary so again here the documentation part is 80 so if it's 80 marks ideally you should give 80 percent of your time to the documentation right so that's what i'm trying to just uh highlight the documentation is very very important now uh so this is something again which uh we need to consider that how cp2 papers are marked uh, it's the ability of producing the model in such a way that the fellow student can understand uh, the senior actually may not need to go through the model step by step they will just understand and take an overview of what you have done and uh, you need to have a coverage like an entire coverage of your uh, methods that you have used you need to make appropriate techniques the practice the approach uh, all the uh self checks needs to be there and this is a very very good thing that they you know this this is actually a very interesting thing is is that if you make any mistake in middle they will not give you marks over there but after that obviously because a model is a continuous process so after that whatever steps you have done will obviously contain errors since the top part had an error so the below parts will obviously have errors so here what they do is they will not deduct marks they will not deduct marks for the follow on errors so if you have done a mistake on top they will just may not give the marks over there give lesser marks and after that all the steps will be like fully you will get full all the marks so that's not a very big deal and that's actually a very 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 uh positive point of cp too, since the modeling may not be very easy always right after this we have uh <clears throat> so yeah this is something which i have already discussed now what are the contents that we need to include in case of order trail so first we start with objective so or the purpose of the model like um maybe um a state department has uh, contacted your company they want to do some things so you need to elaborate like just maybe a half a page you need to write the purpose or the objective what are the different scenarios you are modeling uh, what are the different calculations just one one line you are doing so that is just half a page that's your model then you give the data so what data you uh, they have given what are the sources of the data um if you have done any validation on the data so you need to give the checks that you have carried out to validate your data set 
and if you have made made any corrections to your data so that is also needs to be stated so somewhere around one one and a half one 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 page is your data and then you need to give the assumptions so assumptions is generally not stated in the question paper you need to make your own assumptions while modeling there are some assumptions which are already given in the question that we can take but you will see that there are many assumptions that you are actually making on your own. So approximately 10 assumptions we write. And then we start with the methodology part, which is actually wherein we go sheet wise, like what we have done in the first sheet, in which column, in which cell, what function we have used. So that kind of detail is actually given in the audit chain. And if you have done any charts, if you have made any charts, you put in that. And another thing which is extremely important is the reasonableness check. So self-check or the auto-checks you have already done in the spreadsheet that you need to just document in the audit trail that I've done these, these self-checks. What is a reasonableness check? So if you're getting an output, make sure you're giving a reasonableness check, whether this is reasonable or not, whether this is making any sense or not. So that needs to be there. Again, five marks is there for the reasonableness check. Lastly, we have the approach to the summary so summary is again just like starting is similar to audit trail so you start with the purpose or objective similar to what we have done in the audit trail then again we have the data again the similar things the data which is given the sources validation correction everything assumptions we have made the method now here the methodology part is um very concise like in case of audit trail you elaborate it a, a, a lot here we don't have to elaborate a lot we just need to you know put in uh maybe um what steps you have done you don't have to explain how you have done it majorly it focuses on what you have done right like in audit trail we focus a lot on how it is done here we focus on what it is what is done in your paper and then we move to the results. So you put in all the charts, everything over there. And in the chart, in, in that you actually explain uh, if you have like different scenarios. So what were the difference? Um, <clears throat> if you, if there is a pattern, if there is a trend, explain that. Um, give a few conclusions over there. And then we have the next step. So next steps is approximately 20 to 25 marks actually, wherein again, Results and conclusion is of uh, 26 to 28 marks. So this entire part, like the results, conclusion, next step, this entire part is approximately 50 marks of your paper. Like this is more than 50, in fact, because this is of 26 to 28 and next steps is somewhere around 23. So more than 50 marks is given to this part and you need to spend that much time now if in that 50 marks ideally you should spend that time right if you are spending like only 10 minutes to write the next steps which is of 25 marks you will not get the marks but students generally do that so and they're not able to clear the paper maybe if they are very lucky, they might just clear it. So that is, again, very important, which, which we will focus a lot upon, is next steps. What is next steps? So uh, how moving ahead you can uh, improve your model, what additional data you can get, how you can validate the data in a better way, what additional information you can get and validate, um, do certain sensitivity tests, scenario testing, um, there is something called as econom economic scenario generator, ESG, all those things. We have what are the different scenarios you can build? What are the different parameters you can take? Can you move to a more sophisticated model? You can, can you apply stochastic modeling? Many, many, many points are there. We'll actually, you know, spend a lot of time here as well. So next steps is again, very, very important. And obviously, so that's how you model part. I've stated what we do audit trail summary so this is the entire concise cp2 it's very interesting but again we need to work harder in the sense that at least we need to practice 10 papers we need to type and practice these papers otherwise it's it becomes difficult to clear the exam honestly it's not very easy it might be a easy paper but you need to prepare for it to clear it otherwise you'll not be able to clear it for sure just a quick tip 
uh, to all, uh, do not forget to save your work. So keep on saving your work. That's extremely important in every term. There are some students who may face issues here and there. But yes, it's very important that you keep saving your work. Right. So now you all can put in your questions. Um, whatever questions you all have, you all can just quickly put it up in the chat box. You all can unmute and ask. Any questions? Shripriya is asking, do we need to revise? No, you don't have to revise any technical portions of CT exams. Shripriya, it's not important. As we move ahead, you will be able to recollect just basic things you will need, very basic, which you anyways remember. You don't have to revise anything explicitly for CP2, nothing. Also, the Excel part is very simple. If you are working, then it's like a advantage to you since you are working on Excel, definitely. But otherwise, also, it's fine. Tell me. OK, so let's take a two minutes break and then we'll start with a model. Um, yeah, OK.